Hey, what's going on, bro? I'm glad that you're here. Today, I would like to share with you a list of lessons that I learned rebuilding my first engine. And I know that when I took this engine out of the car in the first place, uh, myself, I was very nervous. And I was afraid that I was gonna run into something that I'd never seen before that I couldn't figure out. And little did I know that it was just gonna be basically the same thing as everybody else, just a couple of different torque specs with a different stamp on the side of the engine that says Mercedes instead of Chevy or Honda or what have you. So let's go ahead and dive into my list of tips that I'd like to deliver to you to build your confidence in rebuilding your first engine. What we do here is go back, 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 back. So first of all, to anybody who's curious, uh, this is a Mercedes M104 engine, and it's gonna be going into my 1997 Mercedes-Benz. Um, it's a 3.2 liter inline six, and anybody who's curious, I will leave a card right here so you can check out my build series on this. So the first tip that I would like to share with you, do not overcomplicate an engine. When you look in the engine bay, you see a whole bunch of hoses and a whole bunch of wires and everything going all over the place. But ultimately, the only thing that you need to worry about when rebuilding an engine is a handful of pieces, okay? It's very simple. Don't think about the bolts. Don't think about the gaskets. Don't even think about the covers, like the valve cover and the oil pan and such. An engine is very simple, and it consists of like five or seven or eight pieces, okay? You got your crankshaft, connecting rods, pistons, engine block, okay? Then you've got your head and the valves, the camshafts, and in some cases, you've got some rockers and some lifters. The head is actually, believe it or not, a little more complicated than the bottom end of the engine. It's easier to rebuild the bottom end than to rebuild the top, I would have to say, personally, after doing both of these things. So that's the first thing I wanna say. Don't overcomplicate an engine. An engine is extremely simple. Um, one of the most complex parts, actually, of rebuilding the engine is keeping everything organized, but I have tips on that coming up here soon. The second thing that I'd like to share with you is having a basic understanding of how an engine works. In fact, this might even be better as the first tip, but I assume that you're here because you already know how an engine works and you wanna learn how to take one apart. You need to have a basic understanding of how an engine works. An engine is very simple, and simply put, it just converts fire into a shaft rotating. And the mechanism it does that by is very similar to how a bicycle works with your feet on pedals but instead of your feet, it's explosions or fire, and instead of pedals, it's pistons, okay? So that's my second tip. Now, the third thing that I wanna share with you is uh, based on organization. So the way that I did things, I took all the parts that came off of the engine before I started taking covers and stuff off, and I put them all into a box. So that's like water pump, alternator, power steering pump, AC compressor, and things of that nature. And I also took, you know, like my radiator and AC condenser and all, everything. And I put them, you may not see them, but they're over here underneath my table. You know, you, you just want to take all those things and put them away into a box and set them into a corner because you're not going to touch them for a while. Then the next thing, as you take apart the engine, you want to take all the covers and stuff and all the pieces and you want to put them into boxes, uh, into a separate box so that you don't have, you know, your alternator and things like that in the same box with your timing cover and stuff. And the next part of this is bolts. So the way that I dealt with bolts is I made diagrams using a Sharpie and such, and I looked at whatever part, like the front side or the top side or, you know, the left or right, whatever, and I made a, a drawn diagram and poked holes for where all the bolts go, and that way I had an actual literal diagram of where bolts go that correspond to the bolt holes on the engine. And I also took pictures of everything. And obviously I took pictures and video of everything because I made a YouTube series on this. Um, but even if I wasn't making a YouTube series, I would still take pictures of what something looked like before I took it apart. That way when I put it back together, I can look at each wire and each line and each bolt and make sure that things look right. Now for my next tip, before you go ripping an engine out of a car, what you wanna do is make sure that you have a space to put everything into. It's not really gonna cut it if you don't have a garage. If you're, if you're quick and you don't expect rain for maybe a week or something, and you, you gotta do this fast, you know, cause you got a problem with your engine, you can probably get away with rebuilding your engine out front of your house or something like that 
but personally, I wouldn't recommend it. I know in my experience, this took me a couple of months, and I took a break halfway in between because I had other things going on in my life that I didn't expect. And so I highly recommend having a garage. It's doable without a garage, but I highly recommend having a garage, even just a small garage, or, or at least like a shed or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, and the next part of that too, you want to have an engine stand and an engine hoist. Those are two things that really you need to have. And I want to say that I spent about 80 bucks on this stand at Harbor Freight, and behind the camera there's a hoist, which was about 120, 150 bucks. Together, it was like 200, 240 dollars, something like that. And that's really the biggest expense that you're going to spend on rebuilding your engine. Um, aside from getting all the bearings and seals and stuff like that, all that probably comes up to the same price also. But along with that, you just want to make sure you've got some sockets, you've got some wrenches, you've got uh, preferably power tools. And I would also recommend if you can having an air compressor um, along with an air impact. I've got one laying over here. Um, and it's really good for getting bolts unstuck. You're sitting here trying to get something undone and it's ridiculous. You got to get a breaker bar. You're trying to figure out, man, how am I going to do this? And in my case, when I come across something like that, it takes me literally 30 seconds, plug in my air impact and just boom, done. Okay. Even with my crank pulley bolt here, I, for a minute, I thought about how am I going to get this thing tightened on here with, with, you know, the correct torque and such. And I just smacked it with my air impact and I'm confident that it's at roughly the correct torque. So garage or a shed, something like that, try not to do this in your front yard unless you can do it fast. But if you're here, you're probably not going to do it fast. So have a garage or a shed somewhere you can store this stuff and a crane, an engine crane, an engine stand, and I highly recommend an air compressor with an air impact. Next, the only difference between assembling a Honda K20 or an M104 or an LS or one of the Ford Tritons or the Coyote for the uh, Mustang, whatever you're working on, it does not matter. It doesn't matter the brand, it doesn't matter what it is. The concept is going to be the same. The, mostly the way that all the seals and gaskets go in are going to be the same. The only difference, slightly, is going to be the torque specs for the bolts. Critical things like the crankshaft main cap bolts, your connecting rod bolts, things of that nature. Everything else is going to be almost identical. And with most of the bolts on this engine that aren't internal, I just did them by hand. I don't recommend using a torque wrench for most things, like the valve cover, the front timing covers, the brackets that go on the engine. Most of that you don't need any torque specs for. So you can ultimately watch any rebuild series that's nice and, and uh, in depth and goes across everything and pretty much get the gist of every rebuild out there for any engine. So like I said, the only difference is going to be torque specs. Just make sure that with any engine, go online and just Google your engine, your engine code and uh, crankshaft main bearing torque specs. You know, torque rod torque specs with engine code or um, head bolts torque specs engine code. And after you get that handful of, of torque numbers, that's all that you really need. Just make sure to organize your bolts, organize your parts to some extent, and take pictures when it's coming apart. Now the second to last thing that I want to say, I have an extremely in-depth disassembly and reassembly, primarily in-depth assembly of this engine right here. Even though this is a Mercedes M104, the rebuild of this engine is going to be almost identical, like I said before, to almost any other engine. The only difference is going to be kind of the way that things look, some torque specs, some seals, and the sequence of, of how to do some things. The sequence to do most things like head bolts and what have you are going to be pretty much the same across every engine. So if you'd like to see an in-depth series of how to disassemble and reassemble an engine going over every single bolt, every single seal, everything that you need to worry about, including things you need to worry about when turboing an engine or putting boost to an engine in some case, I highly recommend checking out my build series. I'll put a card right here. And uh, this is gonna be just to the engine rebuild portion. If you wanna know how to take the engine out and turbo the engine and do a whole bunch of extra stuff along with dealing with an automatic transmission, then you can check out the whole turbo series and I'll put a, a card right here for that as well. And the final note that I would like to make here, the only thing standing between you and rebuilding your engine is yourself. 
have confidence in yourself. I'm not saying that you're incompetent, but I know that when I first started disassembling my en engine, um, I was relatively afraid and nervous. Uh, like I said in the beginning of this video, I was afraid I was going to run into something I hadn't seen before or that I was going to have some problem that was crazy and I couldn't figure out. But at the end of this, I can definitely say that I can rebuild this engine super fast and super confidently now um, just because I've done it. And I realize it really isn't that hard. It's really not that hard. So many people do this all the time. And if they can do it, why can't you? And why can't I? Right? So I just want to leave you with that. You are enough. You can do this, okay? If you leave me one of these, I will think that you are awesome, okay? And leave a comment down below with any questions or if you think I left something out here or if there's something you'd like to see or if you just generally like me and my content. And lastly, consider subscribing because I'm always releasing good stuff like this, talking about how things work, talking about how to disassemble something or whatever. This channel uh, pertains to engines and cars and things like that. So that's the main stuff that I'll talk about here. But in the future, I will have some other channels talking about how other things work as well. So definitely subscribe. You won't regret it. And on that note, I will see you next time.